This tutorial video will show you how to operate the new public beta of Avita Ed 3.0 educational software which now runs in a web browser. Although this will work across a variety of different browsers, it is currently optimized for either Firefox or Chrome, and these are the browsers we recommend that you use. The first step is to navigate to the relevant URL up here. When you do so, Initially, you will be given a loading screen showing you that the software is being loaded into your browser. This is the stage at which you need an internet connection. At this point, we now have our software up and running in your browser. This pane shows various different options for the software. Up here, we have the different navigation modes. You can look at the population, which is currently displayed, an organism, or you can go into analysis mode. Down here we have a freezer where you can save configuration options, individual organisms, or entire populated dishes. Over here we have the virtual lab batch, right now set up as population view, showing you a virtual petri dish. And over on this side we have various informational panels, either about selected organisms or entire population statistics and graphs that go along with these things. To start with, we will look at an individual organism. So first we come up here and click in the organism view. We then choose an organism to examine, in this case, the ancestor. We click and drag it over into this panel. Organisms within this software exist as self-replicating computer programs composed of assembly-like language. Here we have a graphical display of our organism, from the beginning of it all the way to the end. If we click Run, we can see as this organism executes its code, initially running each individual command and then copying them over into a new organism that will be the offspring of the original one. We can see as this execution continues, this new organism grow and eventually bud off. In this particular case, this organism is a perfect copy of its parent. and There are no mutations present. Here within the organism viewer, we can choose to set what our mutation rate is, either by moving the slider up or down, or by clicking in this box and typing a new number. We then hit enter, anywhere else in the box, and then you can click either this Done button or this X in the upper corner to close this. If we run this organism here with a 2% mutation rate, we can see that sometimes the organism will produce an offspring that is not exactly identical to the parent. These new mutations will be highlighted with a dark black circle around them. In this case, this K, which is a new mutation, different from the ancestor. If you want to see where that is within the organism, you can click on that location and be shown the instruction number, starting from here, W, as number 1. If, on the other hand, we are to look at a higher mutation rate, we can see that the number of mutants will increase dramatically as we run things from a higher mutation rate. When here in the organism viewer, you can also choose to pause the organism at any point by hitting the stop button. And you can click forward one step at a time, or alternately you can go back one step at a time. If running this organism is taking longer than you would like, you can always click all the way through to the end and see things advance dramatically that way. In this particular case, Running this organism, despite having a higher mutation rate, only happened to give us the same number of mutants as before. And this is because mutations here occur randomly and not in a predefined fashion. If we go to the population view, we can choose to set up various different choices on parameters within our experiment by here clicking on the setup button. We have the option to change the size of the world. It starts as a default of 30 cells by 30 cells, so 900 cells available within the world. 
and click on these numbers and change the configuration if you so desire. Here you can again adjust the mutation rate just as we did in the organism view by either moving the slider or by clicking in this box and changing the number that way. You can choose the ancestral organism that you are going to use in this experiment by clicking and dragging an organism from the point in the freezer here into the ancestral organism. Notice that you can place multiple ancestral organisms if you wish. If you place them here, it will evenly space them throughout the map. You can choose whether organisms will be born near their parent or randomly spread throughout the world. You can choose which resources are available within the environment. These resources are necessary for organisms to be rewarded for completing various different logical tasks. The ancestor does not start with the ability to do any of these tasks, but through random mutation, eventually certain tasks may be developed, and these are arranged from the degree of difficulty of them, which is also the degree of reward, from easy tasks that require only a small number of instructions to perform, to a brutal task that requires a long string of instructions to perform. You can choose to include or exclude these individual resources by clicking on the checkboxes to make them go away. Clicking again will bring that checkbox back. You can choose the repeatability mode. Here we have things set to experimental, which means that you will get a new random set of numbers every time things are generated. There are occasionally times when you may wish to have large numbers of people repeat the exact same experiment and get the exact same result, in which case you can choose this demo mode which will provide the same series of numbers every time a random number is asked for. You can also choose whether you wish the run to be paused manually, that is, the user can click pause or stop and keep the population from moving, or you can choose to pause it automatically at particular updates if you have a desired length of time to run the population. If we come back to map, you will see that these ancestors have been spread throughout the world. We click run, these organisms begin replicating. At first, organisms will only exist nearby where we started the ancestors as these colonies grow outward. Each one of these squares contains space for one individual organism, and organisms are colored based upon their fitness. Some of these cells are black, where no organism has lived. Some of these cells are gray, where only organisms that are not capable of self-reproduction are living. And other organisms are colored in this color scale, ranging from high fitness of these light yellow colors all the way down to low fitness of these dark blue. Here we can click on an individual cell and get information about the organism that lives there. Or we can look at the population level statistics. You'll notice that at the beginning of the run, all of these numbers here were zero, showing that no organisms were completing any of the complex logical tasks that they can be rewarded for. But very rapidly, some organisms began completing some of these simple tasks. These are rewarded and therefore more likely to spread through the population. If we want to find the individuals that are performing these tasks, we can click on the relative button showing which ones are performing the task they are all highlighted in green. We can also see here the number of organisms performing the selected tasks. At the moment, only a single task is being performed, so we can't look for organisms that are performing a combination of different logical tasks. But once we have multiple different tasks in the world, we can choose multiple things and find which organisms are performing all of them. You'll notice that the numbers down here on the fitness have changed throughout the run. At the beginning, these numbers are very small because there are very small fitness benefits from even the best organisms in the population. But as fitness improves, these numbers will become larger and what fitness value is required to get to a particular color will change. At any time during this run, the user can click the pause button and stop the population where it currently is. This can be useful for investigating individual organisms because you don't have to worry about new organisms replicating over there. These, uh, in this particular case, clicking on this button shows that this organism 
has performed the NAN task. Here we can find those are the three organisms that are performing the second task. These are the two organisms performing the first task, but there are currently no organisms performing both of the individual tasks. We can choose to look at this particular organism in more detail later by clicking and dragging it here to the freezer. This will then prompt us to name this organism. Here I am naming it NAND as it is performing the NAND task. This organism is now something we can look at within our organism view, but we can also continue running the population from this point. Therefore, we are not required to only save organisms at the end of an evolutionary run. In addition to saving an organism, we can also save other things within the population. Either here we can save the configuration, that is, the set of parameters that we have set up for the experiment, we can save the organism, as was shown before, or we can save the population, allowing us to save the entire dish all at once. We can also cancel and choose not to save anything. This way, pressing a button does not obligate you to do any particular feature. You'll notice at the moment that this is telling us that the workspace has not been saved. This is because I have not chosen to save the workspace yet. However, coming up here, we can go to save uh, the current workspace. This allows us to open up this workspace again later. Similarly, we can export our data. This will go to wherever we have chosen to save data, or we can simply open it with a utility this way. And you can see that we very rapidly get a comma separated variable file allowing us to look at large amounts of data. This will go to wherever you have chosen to save things. In this case, I have set the browser to ask me where to save things. You may have it set to automatically save to your download file. At this point, we can then look at this organism, just as we did with the ancestor, by dragging it here to the organism viewer. And we can see that there are many differences from the ancestor. If we run this, this will show us at which point particular tasks are performed. In fact, this particular point where this zero turned into a one shows us the particular command at which this task was performed. Below this information about tasks, we have graphical representations of the input, register, and various stacks. We can also get further detail about individual instructions for those who are interested. At this point, we now have all of the information we need to use this program.